But I, I worked in residential. I'm a residential guy. I owned a residential company. The only CO2 that I had any experience with was coming out of trees around where I was working. <laughs> so just a real basic thing. I mean, we know the refrigeration cycle. I'm assuming that's something you expect people to know when they come to your class, mm -hmm. the general refrigeration cycle. Yeah. And I would expect that most of these guys here know the same thing. Uh, there's a certain level of technical knowledge that I think the chat here, I could look at them and I see they have that. Mm -hmm. So knowing that, what what leap do I have to make mentally to understand CO2 refrigeration from the stuff we all know and love, whether it be R22, whether it be, you know, just standard refrigeration using like 404, just what's the jump we need to make to understand it? The biggest thing you need to understand is that it's refrigeration. We got it. We got it. We're, we're there. That's it. That's it. I see um, so many people trying to do a lot of scare tactics. Um, oh, the pressure is high. And this happened when 410 came out because 410 came out even before I started in the trade. And you're going from 22 or R12 or 502. And then all of a sudden now you got 410. It's 400 PSI or whatever. And now CO2, you can run up to 15, 1400, 1500 PSI. But this is an analogy I want to make. You ever use um, a pump jack, a skid, skid pump jack or a skid stir or anything like that that have hydraulics on them? Oh, yeah. yeah. Do you know how much pressure is in those lines? I feel like you're going to wow us with some kind of number here. Way higher than CO2 refrigeration <laughs> pressure. They're just way higher. You know, and you talk to different industries and they'll be like, a thousand pounds? That's nothing. We're dealing with 10,000 PSI, you know? So it's just all in the mindset. You do your job right as a refrigeration professional. You don't have to worry about it. Just a lot of people are trying to put scare tactics out there. Yes, it's higher pressure. Of course, it's higher pressure. Because when you look at the thermodynamics of it, at certain pressures or certain temperatures, it's a lot higher pressure than R12, R404, or R22 but it's still refrigeration. There are a few more components that need to be installed. But if any of your listeners in residential work on any VRV, VRF system, heat pump systems, they've got the same amount of components, only in different places, maybe a few extra. And there are heat pumps, CO2 heat pumps out there now, no different than a 410 heat pump. Once again, it may have a few more components, lots of controls. And what I love about working with CO2 and all the people I deal with and work with, there is a lot of controls. That's great. It's change. It's technology. We all have these cell phones, right? It's so cool. They make it so easy to, to use. And that's what's going to be like CO2 refrigeration. It's going to be easy to do at some point. But right now, there is a little more learning curve. If you want to watch more videos just like this one, click on this playlist right here. If you want to see our brand new video, click right here. If you want to find out more about the great sponsors that make this show happen, click up here. And to join our email list where I notify you when we're going live, click right here.